Hello everyone and welcome to the inaugural episode of This Week in Toku, or Twit with Vac and Buster. I'm the Vacuuminator. I'm Buster Corp. Hey Buster Corp, how you doing? I'm okay, it was a pretty chill day, but you know, you kind of need chill days every once in a while. Yeah, it's been a... It's been a bit of a day over here, but I'm excited because this is the first episode of the uh, the Tokusatsu podcast I've been trying to get going on Modular Media since day one, and I've got you along as my co-host. This is very exciting. Oh, yeah. This week, we're going to be covering uh, a FAQ of sorts for the show, and also all the news that came out of this past Friday's Hasbro Power Rangers Fan First Friday panel. Um... But uh, before we get into that, just a bit of an explanation. Uh, the the purpose of this, this is kind of an episode zero. We're not covering any actual episodes of Tokusatsu this week, and I'll, I'll explain more of that as we go through the FAQ here. But I wanted to do this episode as sort of a primer for anybody who's jumping on this podcast and maybe knows a little bit about one of us, doesn't know that much about the other, or is brand new to the show. We can say go right back to episode zero. We did an FAQ so you can kind of get to know us and our tastes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just got nothing else to say. Let's just go ahead to the FAQ. Excellent. Let's let's get into it. Uh I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask you the questions, and then after you give your answer, I'll give mine. So That works. Buster, what is your general background? Well, I, I kind of just do videos. Just okay, I'm just a fella who does videos on Power Rangers, cartoons, video games, uh, sometimes other... I don't know. Sometimes I do videos on weird internet music memes. Uh, nice, nice. Uh... And uh, I'm I'm kind of a just a floater here on the internet. I'd say I used to say very definitively that I was a YouTuber, but uh, I've I've kind of done a bunch of different things now. I guess you could consider with how often I'm on Modular that podcasts are my main thing. But then again, Modular isn't ever intended to be just podcasts. It just so happens that that's the main form of content we can produce right now. Uh, but I also do action figure photography, and uh, I'm on various forums and social medias and whatnot. It's it's a whole. Th um, oh, I actually forgot to include. I, I do writing on Wattpad. <sighs> Dang it! I, I knew I forgot something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish I had time for creative writing. I always wanted to get into it, but it, it just it was one of those things that always fell on the back burner. It takes a while to like really get into the groove of it, but like once you do it, it's pretty satisfying. Nice, nice. But uh, how did you get into Tokusat? Well, to put it simply, uh, I, I always knew Power Rangers. Like for as long as I was, I can remember being alive. I always knew Power Rangers. I think the the major first season I was introduced to was the Once a Ranger Operation Overdrive special that I watched all the time on this like compilation DVD of Power Rangers crossovers. Huh. Um, that's that's pretty unique, I'd say. Yeah, and then, like, I, I remember watching Jungle Fury and RPM live, and then when Samurai, like, it was a big comeback, I was like, whoa, the Power Rangers are back, and they're using Shinkenger footage, because I actually knew what Sentai was at the time, but I really didn't start watching Sentai until Key Ranger, and with Kamen Rider x -Aid. Uh Let me just say, watching the first half of Kamen Rider x -Aid with no knowledge of spoilers or catalogs was magical. Oh, man. Um, I can only imagine. Yeah, and then I got into, like, your Garos and Doug Engers and, like, all sorts of other Ultraman just all sorts of other toku from there and here i am now very nice well um i think much like uh all of us filthy westerners i got into tokusatsu through the powerful rain um primarily uh spd spd was the first full season i watched i caught bits and pieces of dino thunder my first memory of anything tokusatsu related is actually an ad for an episode of dino thunder on abc kids uh if anybody remembers hmm. that block um and yeah, I, I, that's where, i think that's where i watched jungle fury at rpm okay okay cool so it was going for that long that's neat um but uh, SPD is where I really got into it because I think that started up either just before or just after my family got cable for the first time. So I watched it pretty religiously on JetX. I loved SPD and to this day, a lot of stuff from SPD is kind of some of my, my favorite bits of uh, Power Rangers. Um, but of, and I kind of fell out of it um, during Mystic Force just because 
I, I, I like really was opposed to the idea of magic Power Rangers having come into it in such a technology based season. Uh, and I was aware of Operation Overdrive, but I didn't watch any of it until much later. Um, and I did watch a, the first few episodes of Jungle Fury when they came out, but it wasn't like something I kept up with. And I had no idea about RPM until a few years after it aired. Um, well, to be fair, I was actually, I, I, from what I heard about RPM's airing schedule, I was one of the lucky ones who managed to catch it. <laughs> nice. uh, because apparently... It was the, the the schedule was erratic as all hell. Oh wow. Um well and then I kinda got pulled into the fandom full on around the time Oof. of uh Super Samurai. Uh just because it was around that time that I found uh a now bygone uh thing that used to be like a big weekly get together in the Power Rangers fandom, the Morphin Legacy Tiny Chats. I used to be on those every week and talking to those guys and gals um, and just keeping up with news and such. And through that, I sort of got into Super Sentai. My first Sentai was Go Kaiger uh, because, of course, it was. It's all those suits in one show. Of course, you're going to go for that first if it's already out by the time you get into things. Um, and I watched my first Common Rider via the J Fusion YouTube uploads of Common Rider Wizard. That was how I started it. And I remember, Ow. I remember there was a point where, like, during the mid 20s, that was when they stopped doing that because they had been doing it for like a few shows when Rider hit its big double explosion. And then, like, YouTube copyright bots started catching on to them, so they stopped doing it in, like, Wizards' mid-20s. And for weeks, I was like, when's there going to be a new episode? When's there going to be a new episode? And then I found out about Torrance. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so that that's basically my story of getting into things. And now I've been watching stuff week to week on and off. I'll have, like, years where I'm really on top of everything and years where I'm, like, watching one or two shows uh and there's even some series i've only just recently got into like i i've kind of been tiptoeing into ultraman for the last three years uh and only just this year did i watch a show week to week for the first time um but uh yeah uh and then the next question on this faq because i know we're if we if we opened up the board to questions, like if we did a weekly question segment, this would probably come up once or twice. How did yeah. we meet? Um, and the answer is, you just started liking my tweets a whole lot, and I and I, I do like, that with everyone. This? I just do that with everyone. Like I got called out on a podcast for liking someone's <laughs> tweets so much. I just do that with everyone. It's it's kind of my, it's I have a problem. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's fine. It it was it was during a period where I was like not making a lot of videos, and I was very dissatisfied with the videos I was making. So when you were doing that, I had this moment of like, "Oh shit, do I have a fan on my hands? What's going on here?" And so I started looking <laughs> into you, and I found that you were making really good content, though like developmentally, you're kind of like a couple years behind me, and so that's how I kind of got interested in you. Is like. Oh, this is because this is something we don't talk about enough with Modular. It's not meant to be a friend group of YouTubers. It's meant to be a group that can kind of reach out towards people who are up and coming on YouTube and help them get better at what they do by sharing knowledge and also saying, hey, you're not good at that thing. I'm good at that thing. Let me help you with that thing. And let, let us also give you a spotlight on this channel, Modular Media. And that's that's kind of the goal with this uh, podcast here. One of the goals is uh, me being able to talk to you and, uh, and uh, kind of get creative um, mojo flowing between the two of us every week and also say, hey, people from my audience or people from the general Modular audience, check out Buster. They're cool. Yeah. So... Yeah. That that's a whole thing, and and hopefully it'll go to more places from there. Um, yeah, but uh, then, and I'm gonna skip over the next question because I actually meant for that to be at the end. But let's go yeah, because it's like it, it just seemed a bit weird in the pacing. Yeah. Uh. So let's get into like some general Tokusatsu uh fan questions just to kind of get to know our tastes. Uh, Buster, what are some of your favorite Toku series and movies? Okay, so, like, 
I, I like all Toku, but I, I lean a lot towards Common Rider, to be honest. I know I'm a, I'm a filthy Common Rider casual. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just say, like, each fa- my common rider favorites tend to change, but currently my favorite is build. I just really like the aesthetics and the story and the characters. It just it's a build is like it's peak common rider. I, I think I'm confident in saying that. Like Geo Zero One and Saber have been great, but like I think build is the peak at least for now. Um, yeah. And uh, for Sentai, I actually like, here's the th- weird thing about Sentai. I always get like halfway through the show, and then I just forget to finish it, and then I lose the downloads and stuff. And yeah, um, <laughs> that's understandable. Like this happened with Q Ranger, Lupin versus Powder Ranger, uh, kinda Kiri Major, kinda Rio Soldier. Uh, what I, I've only I, honestly I haven't finished that many Sentai, but I think I'm confident in saying Go Busters is my favorite Sentai. I mean, Go Busters um, is real. Yeah, I, I just love aesthetically. Um, I, I love how different it is, yet still feels like you still got the themes of friendship and hope that Sentai instills. Mm, yeah. Um, Ultraman. I like con- this might be a controversial one. My favorite Ultraman is Rube. Um, Rube is just really good. Um, it's on. It might be like my favorite Toku ever, next to Build. See, like, you're Uh, the only person I've ever heard talk about it, and I'm glad that you're really positive on it, because it does, as an Ultraman casual, it looks really weird, but the fact that you're so positive on it, I'm like, I gotta check that out at some point. Yeah, like, the thing about Rube is, it's a mix between kind of, like, your modern, new generation, old, like, I really, it's really, like, it's part, like, modern serialization, and part, hey, like, let's just tell really good, emotional, grounded stories of these great characters. Which is like, that's like Ultraman's strength in general. And I just think Rube, just personally, it speaks to me. It may not be quote unquote the. Just personally, I just think it's the best. Like, like even even if I think there's like, Jeed is quote unquote like better in its storytelling, Rube is just my personal favorite. That's fair. I think I've always thought like there's a difference between what you think is the best of something and what is your favorite of something. Like, yeah. personally. Um, to throw it to another podcast that we have here on Modular Media, I think hey. Stone Cold Steve Austin is probably the greatest wrestler of all time. However, my personal favorite wrestler is Cody Rhodes. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> um, any yeah. other favorites you want to list out? Uh, I get like I, I like Dog Engers. I'm really excited for season two. Uh, we might cover that, but I'm not. You would have to catch up on the first series. Season. Yeah, it completely missed me. I had no idea what it was that it was happening until it was over, and everybody's like, "Go watch Dog Engers. It's amazing." And I'm like, wh- "Where? What? How? Ma- yeah. There's how many episodes? Oh, geez, there's twelve. It's a pretty <laughs> short series. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was one of those things where I was just like, I'd have to dedicate a weekend to this, and I don't have weekends anymore. Oof. Uh, yeah. Maybe we could cover it in like an off week. Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah. But uh, just to throw out a few. Oh, you didn't say a favorite Power Rangers. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a bit hard because like currently it used to always be definitively RPM, but Jungle Fury is kind of like Jungle Fury and RPM are currently fighting for that spot. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I just like I, I think I'm growing like I don't know what happened, but I'm just growing a lot more appreciation towards Jungle Fury. OK, that's cool. Um, so for me, I think definitely my favorite Power Ranger show, as I've kind of already alluded to, it's SPD. I just love a lot of the character arcs in the sh- in that show. I think the aesthetics are amazing, and they did some really good original stuff in that series, the least of which being um, just some of the character reinventing and translating that they did, and the most of which being the amazing practical effects by Greg Aronowitz. Um, oh, yeah, the, oh, the doggy puppet. Uh-huh. So and, good. And, like, Grum and some of the the, the Beavor. Like, how can you not love Beavor? Oh, man. Uh, okay, but, it's been a while since I've watched SPD, so I have no idea who Beavor is. A-Squad Blue Ranger. Oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. I was kind of pissed that he got a lightning figure at first, but now I'm like, you know what? He, he kind of deserves it. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I am, the, there was a leak regarding to the lightning collection, which isn't on our topic list this week, but there was a leak regarding the lightning collection last week that hints at two single pack A squad figures coming soon. And I'm just drinking Ooh. all the tears of people who are upset about that. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, let's see. My favorite Common Rider show, it, it really changes quite often. Um, 
but I think I'm going to go with uh, Drive. I really enjoy a lot of the characters in Drive, and, uh, like, it's a... As somebody who is very hardcore fuck the police in real life, it, it makes me kind of believe in the ideals that the police stand for. Um, and it's got a lot of really good themes that are kind of relevant to modern political issues surrounding the police. Uh, like, at the time that show was happening, it felt hyper-relevant to stuff that was happening in the States. But it was being made in Japan, and it probably wasn't about anything going on in the States. It was probably about Japanese stuff and just teaching general good lessons to kids. And, um, like, one of the best love triangles I've ever seen in fiction. Um, to the point of... It never, like, frustrated me. It always just felt like natural character play, which is very Was it a love to... triangle? Or, or, yeah, it was a love triangle. I just for... I just remembered it was, uh... Yeah, I, I completely forgot Chase existed, and that makes me very sad. <laughs> oh, no. Um, my favorite Sentai, um... I think it's probably still Go Kyger. Um, I mean, it was the first video I made a big. It was the first show I made a big video analysis about. Like really, a very good one. I really focused up and tried to get it right with that one. And like, I find the I find the recording quality for that pretty cringy these days. But other than that, I think it still holds up. And like, um, Go Go Kyger itself as a show is just. I feel like it's one of those shows that you can go back to every couple of years and get something else out of. Um, especially if you're constantly adding new Sentais to your library of... And, uh, yeah, um, favorites, uh... I mean, it's it's really hard to talk about favorites when it comes to Garo, because I think the original is probably everybody's favorite, because it's, it's just such a sh solid done-in-one series, but then they continued it. Um, however, Ultraman, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably throw some people, because I've only seen a handful of Ultra shows. I've seen the original Ultra Q, the original Ultraman, Ultraman Naos, and then I watched Ultraman Z week to week as it was airing, um, this past year. And I think Zed's my favorite at the moment. Uh, it was really, really solid. Um. Yeah. Actually, I watched seven episodes of it, but then I, like... I, I forgot to catch up, and then I was, like, so behind, and the YouTube upload started getting deleted, so I was like, ah. But they're re-airing it now, so you might have a chance yeah, to Yeah, well, once, once they get to, like, episode 8, I think I'll, like, get back in. Nice, nice. I'll, I'll, I'll remind you about that in case you forget. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> let's see, anything else I need to talk about? Uh, yeah, oh, those are all the big ones. Wait. Uh, um, just a just a quick shout out, like favorite Tokusatsu movies, because it's it's not often that people talk about just uh, yeah. movies outside of like this is a movie attached to this series. But I do really love Common Rider Zeto. I think it's a really solid forty five minute just experience of Common Rider. And I need also, to check that out. Like, oh, I need to check that out mainly because the only Rider movie I've seen, like this one of the standalone Showa ones, was Shin. And honestly, Shin might be my least favorite Kamen Rider thing ever, so I think I need some mouthwash. <laughs> yeah, that's for fair. That. Um, and then also, uh, speaking of Shins, Shin Godzilla knocked my frickin' socks off of when it came it's out. It's been on my ago. list forever. I need to get to it. Ooh. Um, well, we've been we've been discussing potentially doing this so we can get you on the show a couple times. I might just put Zeto and Shin Godzilla on the analytical fanboys list then. Ooh. But, uh... Yeah, that, that, that's it for movies. Um, so, Buster, what are some of your favorite toku characters? Hmm, that's... Uh, like, uh, I, for the warning, there are probably going to be a lot of Kamen Rider ones. Uh, mm. I'm going to try to avoid build characters, because the, 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 everyone's my favorite there. Uh, and also, I already said build was my favorite series. Um, I'm going to say for some characters... Uh, that's... I'm gonna be like I'm gonna piss some people off and say Genom from X Dan Kuroto Genom from X Aid. I mean, like he's, yeah, he's like like he's he's great. He's, he's great. I, I love him. I know people like hate when he got a lot of goofy, but I still like that. Uh, I don't I don't like that. Like I kind of wish they didn't do that. Like I'm kind of mixed up what they did with him in the V Cinemas. I'm not sure if you've seen the V Cinemas, but basically they've been on my list one, forever. <laughs> He does this like one last evil plan, and it's like eh, that. That kind of that it feels a bit cheap. I kind of like him just be like everyone just screwing him over just mm -hmm. by like keeping him in the bugster vice. Like, I mean, yeah. to 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 kind of 
storm in on you for a second, I would just say, like, his arc in the show, even though he does get extremely goofy towards the end and he kind of he kind of be borderline becomes the rest of the cast's pet, like, I kind of felt like that was the natural end point of that character. Like, I didn't see him becoming this massive evil mastermind as some people see. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Be. Like, I don't, I didn't like that when he became the mastermind. Like, mm-hmm. it just, it just felt like, uh, really? He always like felt I, like, like a I, pretender I, to the throne, and that's that's what he was supposed to be in the story. Yeah, and then it just V and then they're just like, oh, we got to get three V cinemas out of this, so it's just, mm. yeah, yeah. And honestly, the, the the I can they're not bad. They're just painfully meh. Honestly, that's my opinion at least. I need to rewatch them someday. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is supposed to be a positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. What else? What else? Who what other great characters do I like in Tokyo? Uh, Ziggy from RPM. Love yes, him. Yes, uh, the lad. Yes, the lad. Probably the best, like, he's also just, like, every power, good Power Rangers fan. He's, like, the best representation of every good Power Rangers fan ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, like, yeah, also I just really like his suit and his axe, and I really want a lightning collection figure of him. Yeah, I I hope they get to RPM sooner rather than later. But also, like, like, it, like the amount of detail on those suits, I don't know if Hasbro's going to be able to get it. Yeah, I, well, like the weird thing is, I thought they would do it during Beat when Beast Morphers was airing, given the season two end twist. I it, I just found it weird. Why didn't they? I mean, maybe it was like what you said about the detail, but I don't know. Mm. That that's a side rant though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that those are like the two big. Also, um, I, I like uh, Beat Buster from uh, Go Busters. Like, uh, like Goldie, he, he just. I, I'm trying to remember, like, because it's been a while since I've seen Go Busters, but I really like this like energy he had to them, where he's just like he was he was he he was a bit of a goofster, but like uh, like he was a bit of a huck. Uh, he was goofy, but he he always like was competent. Mm-hmm. Like, he was kind of like yeah. the older brother who didn't have a lot of expectations. Yeah. Um. But, uh, hmm, my favorites. Well, uh, obviously, I gotta hit that SPD note again and say, uh, Bridge, the Green Ranger from that season, he's... Well, been... we'll get to him in the Fan First Friday section. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been my favorite Power Ranger since childhood. It's, it's one of those things where I said it enough times as a kid that I feel uncomfortable saying anyone else if I'm at a favorite Power Ranger as an adult. Um, and, uh, Kamen Rider, who's, like, a favorite... Um, I think I, I made a whole video about Common Rider Wizard, but I would just say like, um, the protagonist of that show, Haruto, he's extremely misunderstood. I feel like a lot of people miss the point of that character and I really enjoy him as a character. Um, and then, uh, another, another shout, uh, every, everybody who's, who's seen the show would say this, but freaking Kuga, Godai, Godai that man, mm, gotta love him. Uh, I need to finish Kuga still. I'm like 25 episodes and I still haven't finished it. Uh, we'll get you there someday. Um, One day. Uh, favorite Sentai. I would go with... Um, hmm. A pretty t- I'm going to shout to uh, Yamato, the Red Ranger from uh, Juoger. He's a he's a good boy. Right. He's a good boy. Like he him. does good boy stuff. Um, and uh, favorite Ultraman character. Um, I mean... I feel like this is going to change a lot in a few years when I when I've seen more Ultraman shows, but I, I would just say like Haruki Haruki. You know what? No, he's not my favorite character in that show. My favorite character in that show is freaking Jugglist Juggler because I love how he's just playing both sides. Um, uh, you're gonna love. I've been watching Orb. Uh, he's just as great as an Orb as he is in Zet. Nice. Um, and freaking. Uh, Garo, I would uh, I would say like my favorite character in that franchise I've seen so far is probably uh, Ray, uh, the guy who turns into Zero. Um, oh yeah, hey, think, he's really cool. Yeah, he's super interesting, um, especially in the second s- series because uh, I just watched that last year and they do some. Really I haven't. I, I've stuff. only really seen Versus Road in the first series, so I need to get like more into the sequel stuff. They do some really interesting stuff with him where he actually gets to go off and do some general horror hunting on his own. Like, there's full-on focus episodes for him in that show where you never see Koga, and it's really mm. interesting. I thought that would just be a thing for, like, the movies. 
that he starred in. Well, I think they probably like caught on to the fact that fans liked him, and so they were like, "All right, let's give him like a quarter of the spotlight for this show." And if that seems to play well, he'll get a spinoff. And then he ended up having a spinoff and a sequel series to that spinoff. Ah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's going to do us for characters. So, like, what are a couple of your favorite tokusatsu suits? Okay. Well, I mean, I have to obviously say, like, Evil Black Hole. That's literally what my character in the profile picture of my channel is dressed as. Mm. <laughs> Like, I just love that. It, the, mainly the colors. I love the colors of that suit. Uh, the black and white and the, the cape, the little coat. Uh, so good. Um, for Sentai and Power Ranger suits, um, uh, I, I have to say Go Busters. Go Busters is aesthetically perfection. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tokyujur as well. I like the Tokyujur suits, oddly enough. Um, They're cool. I like them. Yeah. I also like the... Like, I think this might be an unpopular opinion. I like the Zuoger suits. Oh, they're great. I, I don't yeah. see the problem with the... People are always like, oh, the animal print on the on the shirt is so cheesy. And I'm like, that's the point. It's a kid's yeah. show. It has to have the cheesiness. It somewhere. also just leads to, like, cool action. It just leads to just, like... I feel like the suits are just very simple that the action scenes get to do a lot more. Yeah. Like, I mean, it just... The, the suit actors could do a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I'm a um, big fan of simplicity. Um, a lot of my yeah. favorite suits are very simple. Also... Because maybe because I'm doing a Q Ranger adaptation thing, but like I love the Q Ranger aesthetics as well. Yeah. Those are some like ev Go ahead. You're saying? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I just liked it. Uh like, yeah. uh Sorry, we're doing this over Discord, so there's a bit of a disconnect. <laughs> we we're gonna sometimes stumble over each other. Yeah. But yeah, I like how like that like they, they each contain the same motif, like of like space and like the little like constellations visors, but like they just all look so distinct. Hmm. Uh, like and Chishi Red Orion, I I haven't gotten to that part in Q Ranger yet, but that's like like just aesthetic wise, it's like my favorite Sentai suit. Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's probably one of the best form debuts in all of Sentai. Ooh. Uh, but um, yeah, like I was saying, some of my favorite suits are like really simplistic ones. Like I love love Common Rider Wizard Space form. That's that made me want to watch Common Rider was just seeing early promotional shots of that suit. Um, and then... Uh, that, that's, like, the same with me and Drive, because Drive was the first one I finished. Mm. Uh, and then to shout another common Rider, uh, I love, even though it's only in one episode, I love Amazing Mighty Kuga. Just the shiny black on the matte black with the gold trim and those piercing red eyes. Ah! Um... Oh, that's a good one. The, the Juoger and, and the Tokyuger suits are great. Um, I also, even though they are very overused, I, I like the Ju Ranger suits a lot. Um, Fair. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can't, as far as that franchise goes, I don't think you can beat the classic original Garo suit. It's just so awe-inspiring. Um, I, I kind of like the Virtual Road edition of it, but like, the, of course, it can't beat the classic. Yeah, I've barely seen any anything from Versus Road, so I don't. Uh, it's on my list. Um, and uh, trying to think of an Ultraman I can shout. Uh, I don't know. My favorite, my favorite form of Zed is probably um, uh, Gamma Future. I really like that that form and just the way it it moves and it's it's totally different than any of those other forms in how calm it seems to be um, it's really cool how the suit acting that one um, yeah i always love when the suit acting plays into like the form strengths um but uh let, let's move into another big kind of fan focused uh element of tokusatsu what are s some of your favorite pieces of tokusatsu music I well, I love token music. I really wish that I, I just wish there was like more covers of it because I just I love listening to like reduxes of great songs and Toku has a lot of great songs. I'm actually gonna look at my playlist to see if there's a what, to see some of my favorites. Um, I I like Saber has my favorite Common Rider theme, like Almighty. I love Almighty. Uh, I'm, anything I'm making goes. a face right now because hard disagree, but okay. Uh, anything goes from O's. I also love. Yes. Um, okay. We're back on the track. Yeah, yeah, we're back. We're back. <laughs> um, and um, I also love uh the finger on the trigger from Double. Um, I like the the new they they released uh for the Geo Decade uh, Decade versus Geo special. They released two versions of uh the song called Inside Out. Uh, Decade's version is better, but Geo's version is still pretty good. Mm. 
It, it's like it, it uses the uh, that also leads to ride the wind because it like decades version uses some like uh, similar instruments to ride the wind and ride the wind is just so good. Oh, ride the wind is one of the best inserts ever. Yeah, like it just perfectly captures what decade is. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Um, I also like uh, there's this really like someone that there's this person who made fan made common writer insert themes it's like actually a japanese person and uh they made some pretty good build, fan-made build insert themes I like the justice and rogue one they did uh let me just I, I can link it to you later but like it's good stuff um all right um your favorite music uh i'd say i'm definitely into some of the like more hard pump up jams just because uh i i i not to gloat, but I work out every day after work, and so I have <laughs> I have a playlist that is basically half toku music, half wrestling music. Um, so uh, I'd say like probably my favorite song in all of Sentai is Go Kai Zenkai Dash. That's that's like such a freaking banger of a Sentai insert theme. Um, is that like the main? Is that a mecha theme or the main battle theme? Uh, it is the alternate battle theme, because Gokaidra had, like, a ton of insert songs, but, uh, ah. um, I, Gokai Zenkai Dash is definitely my favorite of them. It's, it's the one that, that, uh, I'm not gonna sing on this. I'll, I'll link it to you later. Uh, yeah. Actually, do you remember that, uh, that, that, um, meme I hopped in on on Twitter, a f- uh, like, a few weeks ago? That was that footage from the, uh, the Halloween animated movie? No, I could have sworn you you uh, retweeted that. Oh, was it? Oh, what animated movie? Uh, Halloween animated movie? Yeah. Hotel Transylvania. Uh, I re. I, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh that. Oh, I think I remember. Kind of. Yeah, I remember that. I remember what you kind of posted. Now, yeah. Yeah, it's the song I used for that. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, oh, that I, was pretty good. I can't wait for people to yell at me on Twitter. Like, where's that tweet? I'm having trouble finding it. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, like like any good fan, I do enjoy the Power Rangers Redux album that Ron Wasserman put out uh, almost. I actually years ago. haven't listened to that album, and I kind of hate myself now. It's a pretty good reorchestration. There are some songs I prefer the original version of, but mostly it's it's really good. Um, I I uh, one song he didn't get to do on it because it's all songs from MMPR season one because those are the only ones he still has the rights to. Uh, Fair. But uh, one one song I love of his, and I think it might have been like one of the last songs he did for Power Rangers before he left up until SPD, um, Go Fly Win from In Space is fantastic. Uh, I really, uh, even though I'm I'm in the camp that doesn't like Common Rider Gaim very much, Gaim has a banger of a theme song, and uh, the insert song Raise Up Your Flag is in my workout playlist, because it's, it's just... Uh, so- Raise Up Your Flag is so good. Yeah. Uh, like, I, like it actually, it also just one of my favorite Gaim inserts, mainly because I love that moment in Gaim. I'm not sure how you feel on it, but it's like I think that's where Gaim peaked. Yeah, that would that was like just before I got disillusioned with Gaim. So that was when I was like at the height of this show is awesome. So that that song's kind of entranced in good. Um, yeah. Uh, to give uh, oh um elements fucking. Great oh yeah, theme. oh yeah. I, I talked about that in the Blade video I did. Mm-hmm. Um. I think it's interesting that I'm a guy who prefers elements, and you're a guy who prefers uh, the f- the first Blade theme, Blade Brave. I did. Did I say that? I, I thought you said I preferred elements. I could have sworn that's what you said in your video, but oh, that, I, I think that's what a commenter said. Um, oh, okay. Um, but uh, I mean, they're both great. I think everybody yeah, who says great. Blade Brave is trash is an idiot. Uh, because Blade Brave is great, elements is amazing. It, it's kind of yeah. like that. Um, also, I just think Blade Brave is kind of hampered in show by the visuals. I can barely see what's going on in Rod's Blade Brave. That's the, yeah. Um, and then also, I was trying to find it in this playlist here so I could remember the name of it, but uh, um, uh, Common Rider Gates' theme, not not like his insert song. It's your Guardian. Uh, no, not that. Oh. The, the Gates' oh. revive theme from the score of Geo is wonderful. Ah. I really like it. Yeah. Oh, here it is. And f- the video I have saved is literally just titled Gates Revive Theme. But uh, <laughs> here, I'll, yeah. I'll link it so you can listen to it. Um, yeah. I, I I really like that song. Um, and uh, I think that's all I wanted to hit, at least for like stuff I'm vibing on now. Um, but uh, 
then, uh, and I think we already answered this next question earlier because of the way I kind of went on about modular media for a little bit, but yeah. uh, just to reiterate, the reason we're starting this show is because uh, I want to highlight Buster a little more. We want to we want to kind of ex- have a way to regularly talk and exchange ideas, and uh, also this will force both of us to keep up with shows week to week, which. Yes! As Buster mentioned, they have trouble doing with, and uh, aside from Ultraman Z, I didn't keep up with anything for like the last year and a half. I do feel quite bad about that, because now I've got like two Sentais and a writer show to catch up on. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I, as I said earlier, I have to watch Garo Verud at some point. Yeah. And Doug Enters. Don't forget Doug Enters. I will yes. I'll probably keep telling you to watch Doug Enters until the day we die. Oh. <laughs> I'll make a point of it in the not too distant future. That is my point. On next Sunday, AD. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'm throwing this out there just so people can be aware of it. The uh, when will the show regularly release? The plan is to have it come out every Tuesday night because uh, we will record Monday nights and then Tuesday. Uh, those are both days that usually. No new tokusatsu comes out. Like, usually shows air new episodes on the weekend. So we watch everything over the weekend, and then first day of the week we get together and we talk about it, and then it's out before any of its old news. That's kind of the plan. And by Monday, usually fan subs are out. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, my plan is just to binge all the new episodes Sunday night, provided all the subs are out. Um, yeah. I, I, I watch Power Rangers when it airs because I hate my morning schedule. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, what is the planned format? Uh, pretty much we're just going to... We'll put the news at the front because we want to discuss it before it's old news. But then we'll go into episode discussions. And it'll probably be like um, a general f- short thoughts on and then kind of devolve into a spoiler discussion for, I'd say, uh, depending on how many shows we are dis- planning to discuss per episode of the podcast, we'll probably spend, like, anywhere between uh, 20 and 45 minutes on an episode, uh, and how much we have to say, of course. Um, uh, I, I I don't want this podcast to ever get over two hours. Is, um, but, and- because I think if we go over two hours, that'll just be, like, more than, like, the actual episodes that released that day, that yeah. week. Yeah. Um, and, uh, also we are going to be covering things, uh, shows in the order that they start airing. So next week we're going to be discussing the first episode of Power Rangers Dino Fury. That'll be our only show for a little while. Uh, we're not going to discuss any shows that have already started before this podcast. We're only going to add new shows as they start. So we're going to be discussing just Dino Fury for a little while, and then I think the first thing we're going to add will be Kikai Sentai Zenkaiger when that starts in a few weeks, and it'll kind of go Dino Fury, Zenkaiger, and then whatever starts airing after Zenkaiger. It'll probably be Ultraman Trigger, unless a Garo show comes out of nowhere. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I th- like, I'm not sure if Doug Edger's Season 2 subs will start, and I'm, I don't think you... I'm not sure if because that's a season two, so I'll need to catch up on season one. So it really depends on whether I can watch season one between that show starting. Or- yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's generally the the plan as far as the format. Um, and then uh, because a, a lot of franchises in Tokusatsu, especially a certain one that we're going to be discussing for the first few weeks of this podcast have things like comics and animation and movies and other stuff spinning off out of it. The question would be, are we going to be discussing those things as well as the tokusatsu installments? And the answer is no. This is a podcast about tokusatsu. We will only be discussing episodes of tokusatsu shows or tokusatsu movies that release. Um, There's not going to be... Uh, we're not going to talk about the Power Rangers comics every week. We're not going to talk about, um... A- SSS Dinozon when that starts. Yeah, uh, we're not going to talk about a new, uh, Power Rangers movie if that ends up happening, and, uh... uh we, we actually might, because, uh, we, actually, because that actually might be Toku-related, so... Fair we might talk about the movie. I think it depends on how the movie ends up looking. We'll talk about the first trailer, at least. Yeah, we'll talk about the trailer. Um, and, uh... Actually, you know what? I don't think we've discussed this. 
do we want to talk about Godzilla vs. Kong when that comes out? Yes! Yes, let's I'm, let's try. Let's. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much... Oh, yeah, I, I think we should. Like, I, I need some mouthwash anyway, because I'm planning to watch Snyder's Justice League cut, so I'm like... <laughs> oh, man. That means I need to watch Skull Island and King of Monsters, because I still haven't gotten around. Oh, those are... So, uh, Skull Island's really good. King of Monsters is fun, but not as good. <laughs> Okay, so I'm probably going to bump those and Doug Engers to the top of my to-watch list after I finish the show I'm currently working my way. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then the last question on the FAQ, um, and, and this will be featured in every outro of the show, but I wanted to go ahead and put it here as well. What are our external links? Where where can people find us besides this podcast? So Buster, why so don't you I go have- off on that? Yeah, so I have a Buster Corp YouTube channel where I do my usual video shtick, and also have a Twitter, um, and that's it. Nice. Wait, I thought you deleted your Twitter. Uh, it's a new one. Oh, okay. Uh, what's the app for? Like, it's more of a calm one. It's, a uh, it's, you know, like, the, the app, I, I kind of remember the app, but the app's kind of hard. It's Veilbusters underscore off. Okay. I'm gonna go follow that right now, because I have not heard Yeah, I'll link, I'll link it to you. Alright. Uh... And then uh, I am the Vacuuminator. You can find me on YouTube. I'm not currently actively making videos. However, uh, you can view my backlog at uh, youtube.com slash user slash the Vacuuminator, which is spelled because I get this question a lot. It's spelled T-H-E-V-A-C-U-U-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. Don't pick a long portmanteau name. It, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, I can speak from experience trying to Google that name. Uh, it, I'm also on Twitter myself. It's just at the Vacuuminator, all one word. And then uh, Instagram is where I post my action figure photography. So if you're into that, if you want to see uh, kind of me um, not so much uh, playing around, but like trying to get realistic scenarios out of modern six inch scale figures. Uh, go check out uh, at the underscore vacuuminator on Instagram. Um, and that's pretty much it for the FAQ portion. So now we get to have our first news discussion, which is that uh, for those of you who aren't in the know, uh, pretty much every week since the pandemic began, they kind of took a break for the holidays, but they've been back to it the last two weeks. Power Rangers does these fan first Friday streams where they basically give in update and do a few reveals regarding a one of the many franchises they do collector figures for um like they've done marvel ones gi joe star wars transformers and of course power rangers because hasbro currently owns the rights to uh both the power rangers toys and the power rangers show so they did um a big one on the 12th which gave us a bunch of news regarding power rangers dino fury because that's about to start and uh some stuff regarding the lightning collection the six inch collector line that i'm a big fan of uh doesn't seem like many other people are anymore but i still like the lightning shin i mean really i just prefer the new power like i usually if i want to collect power Ranger toys i want the new ones on tv so like i mean it looks fine i have like the i have nate uh beast morphers gold and i like that figure but i mean like, it's it's one of the best ones oh uh, yeah but like you know i, I just prefer like the simpler six inch like line that's fair. That's I mean, like, um, I, I I have a very specific taste in figures these days, so I don't begrudge anyone for stepping outside. Of it. Yeah. Also, just like ten dollar figures are more affordable for me than twenty at the moment. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I sometimes struggle the budget for twenty dollar figures, and I'm 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 somebody who's trying to um collect everything he's interested in from all of the six inch Hasbro lines and. Um, ah. Also, occasionally, I'll dip into other things. Like, I've got uh, the NECA Back to the Future Marty McFly still sitting in my garage waiting. To- mm. um, or one of them, because I think they did three different party. But anyways, uh, Buster, you were actually there watching the stream. So why don't you give some general impressions of the stream, and then we'll go into the bull. Okay, first, uh, uh, let's talk about the presentation, because this was a Valentine's Day special. Um, I don't mind them including Valentine's Day elements. Problem is, they kind of... Instead of, like, either just doing all... Because they had these sections in between these hype reveals where they just shout out puns about Valentine's, these little Valentine's Day card puns, and it really just kind of ruined the pacing. Hmm. Like, it, it, like I get a part of your puns, you know, you, you do you. But, like, I felt like they should have, like, that should have been, like, at the beginning, 
just so like everyone can still keep getting in, and then and then you can do the lightning collection, then Dino Fury Zords, and Dino Fury theme song. Yeah, it's probably just them trying to be cute and make it more yeah. fun for people. But uh, much like at convention panels, when they try to do that, it's it's a bit of a ball. Yeah, actually, someone put it best. It was kind of like a a convention panel but like you didn't have to wait in line i mean i've never actually watched one of the fan first friday streams so i i only go off of secondhand knowledge because i've not been to a lot of convention panels that are newsworthy either but from what i'm told these are basically just um convention panels as zoom calls which is interesting and it's, it's a very hasbro way to handle the pandemic yeah uh what should we talk about the lightning collection now uh, yeah, so we got Wave 9 of the Lightning Collection revealed. Uh, Surpri- like, I, I was surprised, because, like, did, like, didn't, like, a- SPD Pink, like, the it wasn't that Wave 8, and, like, they didn't really do a big reveal on that, to my knowledge. Yeah, that news just kind of dropped, I think, because that was, that was, like, either the week before or the week of Thanksgiving, so they didn't want to do a stream that week. Ah, um, yeah, fair. But, uh, yeah, w- Wave 8 came out, got revealed a while ago. It's still on pre-order. I think it comes out in 8, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Pre-orders okay, are uh, Wave 9 comes in June, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, either that or, like, two months after that, because they kind of try to space stuff out nicely, so yeah. crazy people like me can collect all of them. Um, um, so let, let me just say, I have not been fond of the Lightning Collection picks, mainly because I just find a lot of the picks dumb. This is probably the best one in a while, save for the last one, which we'll get to. Okay. Um, so we got SPD Green, A, eh? that, that's that actually made, that actually my might, son. I, yeah, you're his son. Uh, I actually really considering getting that one because I, I really like Bridge as well. Yeah, um, especially since like he was in the Overdrive crossover, so of course I want him. So, um, feel free to tell me I'm insane for saying this, but I'm kind of tempted to get four copies of the figure. Because oh, I, I know what you mean, like the clone thing. No, like, no, 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 no. Because Bridge, he was the Green Ranger, and then in the final episode, he got promoted to Blue Ranger. Oh, and then, oh I get what you mean. Yeah, and I already have uh, SPD Red and Blue, so I could technically, oh, yeah. I would want to buy free copies of the figure just to take one photograph of all those figures helmetless as Bridge going, "Hi, Bridge, how you doing? I'm doing good, Bridge. How about you?" <laughs> that, would, that would be great. That would be great. Oh, I'm, Although I'm not sure if you would have the budget for that. And then the fourth uh, the one inst- I would keep in package uh, to get signed by Matt Austin, who I have actually uh, met yeah. before. He's a very nice guy. Oh, yeah. He, he seems like it. Um, But go, go ahead with the reveals. Sorry. Uh, in Space Black. Um, surprise, like, I, I don't know. Like, In Space, like, I, 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 I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that, like, uh, of course, they would do another In Space because they already got the molds for, like, red uh, and blue. Mm-hmm. And I uh, like, yeah, In Space Black works. And oh wait, they already did In Space Yellow, yeah. So I'm guessing we're gonna get a pink one next wave to complete the set. They've done um, yellow and red. We have not gotten blue or pink yet, or silver. Oh, I swear, I, I swear we got blue. Um, okay, but, oh no, I was thinking of like uh the SPD. Um, yeah, my bad. It's okay. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, actually, like the In Space Black thing, like Carlos, because he was also in Turbo. It made me wonder: will we see Turbo in the Lightning Collection, or is just? Or not, is Hasbro going to assume everyone still hates Turbo? And even though it's I just think they're okay. probably going to hold off on Turbo for a long time. Like I'm kind of assuming Turbo, Operation Overdrive, and Super Mega Force are kind of in this strata of let's hold off on them for as long as we can. But then when we start to run out of teams, we'll dig into them. Uh, I wouldn't mind Super Mega Force figures because you know the Go Kaiser suits are still good. So. I mean, yeah, and like I've. I've wanted them forever, but the Go Kaiger figure arts go for insane aftermarket prices, so I wouldn't mind yeah. Lightning Collection Superman. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm fine with them doing in Space Black. Carlos is kind of my least favorite member of that team. I don't dislike him; he's just my least favorite. Um, yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll probably get him at some point. Him and the next reveal are kind of in the maybe later pile. Yeah. Uh, Lost Galaxy Blue, actually, like, uh, I've, I've, I've seen a good chunk of Lost Galaxy. Uh, mm-hmm. I like this pick, mainly because I like Kai. Mm-hmm. And also, like, yeah, of course, you already got the Lost Galaxy Red Mold. Um, mm-hmm. He was in the last... Um, we got a reissue of him in the last wave. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So it okay. makes sense. And I do like I do like Kai, um, but again, he's he's another least favorite member of that team for me, so... Ah, uh, yeah. Um, however, I will say... 
It's probably the best unhelmeted head sculpt they've had in the line. Oh yeah, since it, it definitely is. Uh, like Ravi's was is. was the last like gold standard for me. I don't know if this beats Ravi for me, but it's up there. Mm, yeah. Um, Although now I'm kind of pissed because Ravi's my least favorite member of Beast Morphers team, so I'm like, <laughs> oof, you got the best one. Um, uh, and then this last one. So, th- so the way they revealed this, like, because I was watching this, they said it was gonna be a surprise. I was like, ah, they're gonna show Dino Fury Red. Uh, and then, like, they'll lead into, like, the Dino Fury Zords. It was Tenga Warrior. I think they thought people were going to be a lot more excited about this than people actually were. Because the thing about Power uh, Hasbro's collector lines in the last couple of years is they leaned very heavily into army builders. Because they figured out there's a lot of collectors out there who are really into army building. So they're yeah. like, here you go, it's a new army builder, and it's an all-new sculpt. Isn't this exciting? And I the Power Rangers cool. fandom went, oh god, more MMPR. I mean, th- that's a very valid complaint. Honestly, I'm just pissed because, really, Tango Warrior? Mm-hmm. Tango Warrior? They're I mean, definitely, it looks cool. They're definitely like towards the bottom of the list of army builders out of Power Rangers I'd want. That being said, I'm still probably going to get two of these. Yeah. I, again, the figure looks good. I just like I feel like the pick was like this is whether this wasn't good timing, especially since we already have putties for the lightning collection. So like I think the army builder crowd is satiated for a while. Yeah. And also, um, what is it? Um, I feel there's a lot of lot of requested things. Like they couldn't even do more like dinosaur themed rangers to like hype up Dino Fury or like. Well, they uh, just really... finished out MMPR. Uh, well, talk about like Dino Thunder. They just started doing Dino Thunder and Dino, mm-hmm. and still we need a couple more Dino Charge Rangers, like the f- like mean, pink and green. I mean, I realize I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here, but like it's fine. We have probably two years of Dino Fury coming, so they could ah, yeah, probably fair. be like, here's one or two Dino Rangers in each wave going forward. Like we still have Kira and Tommy from Dino Thunder to get. We still have, uh, wow, we've only got two characters from Dino Charge, and there's ten Rangers in that team, plus oh, gender they, swaps. I swear, I swear they did Coda, but, oh, like... No, we've got, I, we do have free, but not, we don't have Coda yet. We have Ivan, Chase... Oh, yeah, we have Ivan, Chase, Chase, and Tyler. Yeah, so they can still do, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember yeah. the, uh, the male Purple Ranger's name. But, uh, uh, Albert? Yes, they can do Albert, they can do Kendall. Oh, that, I, would, I would buy that. That would be the instant day one buy for me. I love Albert. Yeah, they can do Coda, they can do... All all those Rangers can come. I, I Oh my god, I would love a Lightning Collection Prince Philip, honestly. He was one of my favorite characters in charge. Um, yeah. He was kind of the more, one of the more forgettable, but he's still a pretty good character, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, then they start talking about the Zords, which, okay, the Zords look great. They look really uh, great. Um... But I really hope they're actually in stock. <laughs> yeah. Because I could barely find any Beast Morpher Zords. I think Beast Morpher Zords primarily sold online. Like, everybody I saw who got them got that big Amazon-exclusive Ultra Zord pack. Ah, fair. Um, And then, uh, like, I'm going to be honest, I don't like the aesthetic of the Dino Fury slash Rear Soldier Zords. I think the suit looks good in action, but I don't like the way the toys look. It's just, uh, it's a little okay. too, I don't know the correct word, because like, I want to say preschool, but that's not what I mean. Uh, it's yeah. it's a little too... Then toy-like. again, like, then again, the, the kind of, they were like holding it, like, you didn't really get like any set photos, or like studio photos of the toys, so maybe they'll look better, like when you actually have them in hand, but mm-hmm. yeah, I get you. And I'm also talking about Mind's Eye of the Ryu Soldier versions, too. Oh, uh, okay, okay. However, I will say I do like that it looks like they probably improved on the articulation on these versions a whole lot, and... Uh, oh, yeah, like, the articulation looks insane, but then again, then again that's kind of part of the Ryu Soldier's mech, like, main, like, made point to be more agile Mm -hmm. which almost makes me think that might have been the reason hasbro wanted this season less so dinosaurs and more so oh megazord we can actually make posable yeah because like the from what i've seen of the beast morphers like megazords they're kind of posable kind of yeah uh, they have a few added joints, but they're not, like, a huge improvement. Um, yeah, okay. And then the other notable thing here is uh, the Zords will come with sculpted keys. So everybody complaining about 
the the regular keys just being stickers calm down yeah actually like i i have the dino fury morpher in my hand uh long and also i just i just took out the regular uh the regular the the key itself like the basic key you get with the morpher and the figures uh i actually don't mind it i do agree it could have been better but uh for like the cheap like hey pack in toys you get without all the collectibles it's pretty okay hmm nice but like yeah I, I, but, but i am glad that we're getting a more accurate version with the uh zords yeah although i don't like the combo like they did the gender duos instead of the actual show duos and that's just gonna like that's gonna make it even harder to form the base megazord in the show because like if you watch real soldier you know that like Blue, pink, and red, that's the base Megazord, but pink and blue are in different packs, so... Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It's probably to uh, encourage the whole gotta buy them all thing. Yeah. Or, or just gender segregation or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and then we got some reveals regarding uh, the Super 7 figures, because Super 7 recently got the license to do Power Rangers stuff, and... Uh, he wore Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They mentioned this in like their little branding. They always mention Mighty Morphin, which I think softened the blow of this easier for me. Mm. It's not supplanting the Lightning Collection. It's, it's very much marketed towards Ferdy Suffing collectors who remember the Power Rangers from the 90s. Okay, can I, like, they showed off the transparent Megazord, and that was, like, okay, I guess, but then, the, 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 then on social media, I saw this, like, the old Super 7s also doing these kind of, like, mini figures. The reaction of, like, figures. Re the reaction figures. They look awful, and they're, like, sold for $15. Yeah, no. I've, like, dude, re like, even reaction has been debate, going for lazy. almost a decade now, and I fucking hate reaction, because... The story of Reaction is it started off as a line of reviving this, I believe it was Aliens toys that never ah. got made. Uh, they were supposed to be Kenner figures, but they never got made because everybody realized, oh yeah, this is an R-rated movie. Maybe we shouldn't make toys of it. Um, and uh, those molds were just sitting around on the collector market forever. And so Super 7 picked them up, and this was kind of the thing that got them noticed, is they were like, we're going to actually mass produce these and, and make this toy line that never, that almost existed but never actually happened for all the people who kind of want to experience this. And and you can get them, and it's kind of like, it's going, it, for like 30 suffering people who remember the 80s, it was like going back in time and getting a little extra 80s that that never happened um, well that's fine but my problem is the price 15 dollars really this, this should have been yeah. like a five below thing yeah and they do that because this is directly marketed to collectors and these are like these are basically funko pops for people who don't like funko pops because they have done every license you can possibly think of with the reaction line and it's all this same five point articulation style figure with one accessory thing um they've done wrestling they've done breaking bad they've done jurassic park they've done all kinds of crazy stuff yeah. um okay that would be easier to swallow if they weren't like 15 dollars a pop that's a yeah. bit expensive for the figures of what that you're getting with this it's uh it's one of those things where, like, yeah, I rage at the price too, but I also understand they're making them... It's a limited thing, and it's for collectors only. That's why they think they can charge that much. However, I think the, these figures are disgusting, and and I don't... I, I have this yeah. whole principle of the thing thing with reaction where I get why it appeals to people, but the reason it appeals to people really puts me off because... It's, that, that's fair. It's making modern figures... In a long, long, outsta outdated style of action figure. And I'm like, it's it's regressive towards the action figure. Or at least to me, it feels regressive towards the action figure industry on the whole. And I'm like, no, we, we need to be going forward, not back, damn it. Yeah, uh, what, basically what I feel about Power Rangers. Anyway, uh, speaking of Power Rangers. And then the Trials uh, of Megazord is bleh. Also, uh, the poster looks. Uh, they, we got a Dino Fury poster, which I'm like, I'm glad we have a poster. Yeah, like that 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 just feels a bit more like, yeah, this is gonna be a cool season. And I, I like the poster in general. I love like Void Knight, like he him just standing, all like him in the background, and then you see like the Megazord, like on the side, you see T Rex Champion and uh, T Rex, like uh, the Megazord Dino Fury Megazord Warrior Formation, as they called it on the stream. 
Huh. And then you see all the five rangers and the like real soldier thunderbolts. Um, yeah, it's a very well designed poster. Um, I might actually make it like the thumbnail for. Um, yeah, uh, try not to stretch it though. That would be awful. Yeah. Um, and, and then and we get the. Th- go ahead. You you were saying? I was, I was just going to say like it. we do get. Um, I don't know if you notice we do get a uh, a poster every year. It's just it get it gets buried in all the other news about the show. Like I yeah, can, yeah, yeah. I can show I the you the, the Mega Force posters. They're not great. Uh, yeah, I think I think they used them for the DVD, uh, mm. which I do have Mega Force DVDs because they were on discount when Toys R Us was closing. Nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. But and uh, hindsight was probably a smart move. Uh, t- I thought it was a dumb move at the time because oh, these are on Netflix. Uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, but l- let's get to the the thing I think a lot of theme people want to talk about. So this theme song. Okay, uh, can I start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, first, okay, so like for how it sounds, uh, lame is a whole other issue. Um, for how it sounds, it sounds fine, but it doesn't really fit thematically with Dino Fury. I would say it's serviceable. It's a perfectly fine theme song. I don't mind the 30 second link, uh, length on principle. However, God, does it sound generic for a Power Rangers song. Yeah, uh, actually the person who composed this has composed a couple Disney Channel sitcoms. So I'm like, maybe that's why. Mm, um, uh, but- also, I showed this to Boingo Rider the other night, and he, his his take on it was, oh, the producer asked for an EDM theme, and the person composing it knew that didn't fit with Power Rangers, so they tried to make it fit in the middle. Ah. Uh, yeah, actually, so lyric-wise, I like it, especially the Evolution Revolution part. That, that, that's, that's really cool. That's um, pretty good, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I kind of wish, like, uh, I, I had, like, I've been thinking of some ideas to improve the theme song for some reason, and, like, an idea I had was, like, like you have, like, a higher-pitched evolution and then a lower-pitched revolution. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, and that's, a, it, it's still, like, a fine theme. Uh, the 30-second themes, the 30-second limits, I, I don't like it, I just, and I know we're never gonna get an extended version. Uh, apparently that's a Nickelodeon doing. There was an extended version of the Dino Char theme. I don't know if one. Beast Morphers never got it, so I, I don't assume Dino Fury is getting one either. Uh, um, and like uh, it, it, uh, Simon Bennett on Twitter, uh, the guy who's producing the show now, uh, basically took over for Chip Lynn, and he confirmed that Nickelodeon is why. Hmm. Um, Which uh, makes me think that like possibly Nickelodeon has more influence on Power Rangers than I might realize, but that's discussion for another day. Yeah, um, I mean, there were a number of things that we all assumed was Heim Saban's, uh, like, mandate that stayed after Hasbro took over in Beast Wars, so yeah. it's, it's interesting to kind of gate, um... Yeah, like the Go-Go Power Rangers, like, that could just be Hasbro thinking those are good ideas, but, um, yeah. And I mean, honestly, and I've been saying this since, uh, Megaforce, I don't mind Go-Go Power Rangers being in every theme song. I, like if it's a beat that we just hit in every theme song, that's cool. I don't, but I don't want every theme song to be the samurai theme song. I, I get what you mean. Yeah, basically same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, visual, visually wise, I love. Uh, visually, I love the theme song. Also, like when you see like the actors, they do like the hey, like uh, the uh, character Russell profiles. Curry as Zaito. Uh, we actually see on the side with the ranger posing. That's new footage. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's new footage. I'm guessing that that either might be a new Zord summoning, like they did with Samurai, or that's like a new roll call they're doing, mm-hmm. which kind of disappoints me because the real soldier roll call is beautiful. I mean, I had assumed there was a good bit of new footage in this intro, just because a lot of it is from that base and that forest. Yeah, that the first episode for a while. Yeah. Also, I can confirm that um the first scene of the Zords that's new CGI. Okay. Cool. I, I'm not sure. I actually think. Like, I have this weird theory or, like, idea that, that the first clip we see is from a toy commercial. I, I It just looked very toy commercial-esque, so... I, I think it might be from, like, a Dino Fury toy commercial we haven't seen yet. That could be that could be a good thing. Um, I think my only other, uh, like, critique of this is... And, and this is probably just going to be a thing for the show in general with me. I don't like how generic some of the outfits the actors are wearing. Uh, yeah. In the foot. Well, then again, that's kind of a Power Rangers thing. Mm-hmm. So, but like, I mean, honestly, for for 
you know, in Beast Morphers and in Dino Charge, I don't remember Ninja Steel so much, but like they they tended to have like a natural fit and look to them. These look like they were uh, manufactured for the show. They don't look like they're off yeah, the rack I, I stuff. Get, I get what you mean. Um, um, uh, also, can I mention that they're actually keeping some of the night motif? Because like literally one of the first shots we see is uh, this is like this is gonna be super cool when we see it in the first episode i bet you like we see zaito i think i thought it was the blue ranger at first but it, uh, it's been confirmed it's zaito um he's like riding a veloc a tiny dinosaur i think it's a velociraptor in night garb and he just like uses his sword to deflect a bullet that that's that's cool that's cool man that's just mm-hmm. cool that's that's really interesting i i want to know how that actually plays into things. It'd be great if that's like a flashback we don't get till the middle of the season. Yeah, actually, uh, I've been reading some episode descriptions. We have up to episode three, and episode three looks to be a flashback of Zaito as he remembers what happened on the alien planet. Ooh. Um, and I can, and I think I have a, you know how in the beginning of Real Soldier, like you see the two Red Rangers, the master and the student fighting together? I, I think that's where we're going to get that bit. Oh, have you watched it or? I have not watched any Ryu Soldier. This is going to be the yeah, but like first time in a while I'm watching a Power Rangers season without any footage. Now. Yeah, so it's all. I'll help you uh, with the fill in the gaps. But basically, the, one of the first scenes in Ryu Soldier is the there's two Red Rangers, the Master and the Student. They're both morphed and they're fighting together, and it's like this really cool battle. Um, and I think that's where we're going to get that footage in the third episode, so... You think they're going to bring that suit back as a known character later in the season like they did with Mick and uh, What's-His-Face's dad? Uh, it's like the, it's the same suit. It's not like Ninja Steel where it's like there's a different scarf. No, it's the same suit. Oh, okay. Hmm. So I, I think it's just like a master that Zaito knew. All right. Um, which we already know it's that Eltar, thank God. Um... My mentor, yeah. Zordon, placed me here. <laughs> he literally just, like, he walks. That 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 would, that would be hilarious if that screen cap where it's just him standing there with Void Knight looking at him. A lot of people have been predicting that that's going to be like a door has just slid up and he's about to unleash hell Wait, on Void Knight. There, there's a Void Knight screen cap? I didn't, because like all the screen caps I've seen, there's been no Void Knight. There's a screen cap of the base with, uh, and the center of it is the Red Ranger suit standing in like a tube type thing. That oh, might, I've seen that. Yeah. You can see Void Knight looking at him in the corner of that image. He's not facing Ooh. the camera. Okay, because I already knew like from the episode descriptions, we already know Void Knight is going to be there like right from the beginning. Yeah, he's the big um, bad apparently. Yeah. Which I really hope, uh, I, I don't think you you know anything about Devil May Cry, I really hope we get some, like, Dante, Virgil-esque fights between them. Because hmm. I, th- th- I just think that would just be really cool, especially if the stock footage, especially since, you know, Devil May Cry is sword-based and Dino Fury is sword-based, so. That's fair. Just, just wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, but, uh... Also, weirdly enough, Devil May Cry has a lot of Power Rangers alumni like Johnny Young Bosch and uh, whoever played, Dan Severworth, who played the Quantum Ranger. I have heard that, I have heard but yeah. uh, oh, what you were saying? I was just gonna say, like, is there is there anything else specifically we can pull out of this intro that we want to talk about? Because I'm I'm kind of at a loss for. I think the clip they used of Void Knight was from Psycho Battle, like the Super Sentai, like the little mini series they did before Re Soldier. Be interesting if they have footage for that. Maybe potentially like a mid season crossover special or something. Maybe, although I heard there's not going to be any crossover besides Mick. Mm. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> uh, although I think that's just because, you know, because it's just a special move stock footage thing, so okay. that's probably what it is. Um, uh, although also, uh, thank God for the co- comeback of colored explosions. Those look mm-hmm. beautiful. Oh, and I do like how, even though it's 30 seconds, they managed to show, like, five different Megazord formations, really emphasizing yeah. that this is a very interchangeable Zord pattern. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, although, like, I, I'm kind of worried that the visuals are going to start getting cramped and, like, too short once we get, like, all, all six rangers in here. It'll be interesting to see how they hand. Yeah. Um, and maybe, like, I can, I have an idea where, like, they'll, they'll do, like, duo, like, where they have, like, uh, you know how, like, we have the, hey, turn around and, hey, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I have an idea they could just put multiple actors, like, two actors per, hey. <laughs> like, in how the, Dis- the Disney era, they used to do that with two of the supporting characters? Yeah. Yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. Or, like, Victor and Monty and Mick and Ninja Steel. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that'd probably be good. But, um, yeah. I think that's all there is to say about Fan First Friday, except, like, good God, the reaction was interesting. 
Um, yeah, that was a very uh, a colorful reaction, shall we say. Yeah, um, but uh, I think that's going to do it for this week in Tokusatsu. So uh, one more time, Buster, why don't you go ahead and plug all your stuff? What's up, y'all? I'm Buster Corp. Uh, I just released a video on why animation and Power Rangers is kind of a bad idea. It's fire. I Thomas... It's good. Yeah, it's fire. I make a Thomas the Tank Engine connection. Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas the Tank Engine connection in that video, so you know it's going to be a great one. Mm -hmm. uh, so watch it, please. And do all the other things on my social media. Yee. Uh, and as previously stated, I'm the Vacuuminator. I make videos on the YouTube. I've made some tokusatsu analysis. I've made a lot of toy reviews. I've made a lot of other weird shit. You can find me just by typing in uh, the Vacuuminator, T H E V A C U U M I N A T O R, into Google. So go and do that, please and thank you. And also, before you go anywhere, do me a favor. Give this first episode of the podcast a like, comment on it, subscribe to Modular Media so you can get every episode of This Week in Tokusatsu when it comes out every week. Uh, you're also going to want to ring the bell so you do that because that's a thing you do on YouTube. Follow Modular Media on Twitter to get updates on the show and uh, other little things about it as we're making it. Uh, you can do that at The Modular Media and join our subreddit r slash modular media for the same kind of stuff uh but that's gonna do it for this week in tokusatsu we'll see you next week when we'll be talking about the premiere of power rangers dino fury and uh maybe some news if something drops i don't know we'll see yeah, i have a feeling i have a feeling something might be coming up mm -hmm. i don't know what is but something i mean we only have the copyright information for ultraman trigger right now so we're we're due for some reveals about yeah, I, I feel like, especially since Ultraman usually starts in June, so... But, uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for now, so we'll see you folks next time.